Welcome to worship with Trinity Lutheran Church, located in Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin. We are a member congregation of the ELCA. I am Pastor Amy Welshley. On Sunday, August 30th, we are having back-to-school blessings from 9 to 10 a.m. We'll use our drive-through format, so come on down after worshiping. Thank you to the 68 people who attended our online semi-annual meeting last week. We got a lot of good work done. We elected three new council members, Randy Reckob, Maggie Messler, and Jill Henze. Thank you to our outgoing council members, Craig Gierzak, Vicki Steinke, and Cheryl McCarthy. Thank you for the work that you have done. The new council members got to work right away because we had a meeting on Tuesday. <laughs> that meeting went pretty well, too. I wish I had the words, though, to adequately describe to you the love of God and the love of Trinity that guides this group. It's really a privilege to work with them. On Tuesday at that meeting, the council did vote to begin regathering in person for worship. The target date is Sunday, September 6th. We feel that we have good precautions in place, like wearing masks and social distancing, and as long as we can refrain from hugging each other when we finally see each other, I think we'll be okay. We will follow the same guidelines roughly as the school district. If they close because there is a community outbreak, we will return to online worship only. If someone comes to Trinity who turns out to be COVID positive, we will return to online worship only. You can sign up for worship by calling Sarah at the church Monday through Thursday from 8 to 1 p.m. We begin worship in person on Sunday, September 6th, and then also on Thursday, the 10th. Online worship remains available always. Now, I have had a few questions about what it's going to be like coming back to the building and what the precautions will look like when we are all together. And so the boys and I made a little back to worship video in hopes of explaining some things. Take a look. So, you're signed up to attend worship, huh? But it's a little different, huh? Come with me, I'll show you what's what. This is the door that everyone will enter in. Critters like Rich here will be here to greet you. Hi guys. Hi Rich. Welcome. Hi, Rich. Uh uh uh. Masks stay on in church. We've learned so much about what helps us stay safe during worship, and masks help a lot. And if you forget a mask, there will be masks here just for you. Good morning. May I have your names? Carter Welshley. Great. Well, welcome to worship today. I'm so glad you were able to make it. And Dave is going to show you to your seat. Oh, I'm sorry. We're not handing out bulletins right now. Everything's going to be on the big screen so that we don't have to have any exchange of paper. And... So welcome, Dave will take you. Oh, and if you don't mind, would you um, mind putting your offering in the offering plate there on your way in? Thank you. Enjoy the service today. Looks a little different, doesn't it? We've taped off pews with painters tape to help us social distance, but look at the funny signs though. Funny? Hi guys. Here's your seat and thank you for coming. Thank you. Oh no. They'll come to you for communion, my good man. Now, it's a little different. You want to peel back this purple foil. There's the wafer.
Then you peel back the rest of it. There's the juice. It's, a, it's We're doing juice so everybody can drink it. And if you need special gluten-free wafers, you can ask people and they will give you one. Hey there, Carver. You can always let us go. Thank you for worshiping. Thank you. That's it. How do you feel? It's a little different, but it still feels like worship. Good. Okay, I hope that helped a little bit. Sign up for worship, wear your masks, come only if you are healthy and feel comfortable. If not, please continue to worship online at home. Today in worship, we have another baptism to share. Imsley Joan Evenson, daughter of Andy and Casey. She was baptized last Sunday, August 23rd. We have beautiful music by Mark Nordeen, Bob Lumuro, and Abby Hoffman. And today, we finish our Unraveled series with the story of healing. I think we can all agree that this world, this nation, this state, our own hearts need healing. Let's turn to the one who heals, who loves us, and makes us children of God. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in this call to worship. Don't hold back. Bring all of yourself. For God loves us just as we are. Don't hold back. Bring all of yourself. For every bit of us is welcome here. Scars and fears, depression and doubt, hope and joy, light and laughter. Don't hold back. Bring all of yourself. For God longs to be with us. So let us worship the God of love. Let us pray. Gracious God, we admit that there are things we sweep under the rug. Shame, self-doubt, mental health struggles, and our own insecurities. We know that is not what you want for us, for Jesus loved the healthy and the sick parts of everyone. With Jesus, there is no stigma, fear, or bias. God of creation, help us to love and live in the same way. Forgive us when we hate ourselves or distance ourselves from others simply for being human. You long for better, and we long for you. Gratefully we pray. Amen. Let's sing our hymn, Healer of Our Every Ill. i
Our gospel lesson comes to us today from Mark, the fifth chapter. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerizines. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him anymore, even with a chain. For he had been restrained with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart. And the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I tell you by God, do not torment me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the hillside, a great herd of swine was feeding, and the unclean spirits begged him, send us into the swine, let us enter them. So Jesus gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine, and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank and into the sea and were drowned. The swine herds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. The people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had had the legion. And they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it. Then the residents began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with Jesus. But Jesus refused and said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And the man went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So, here we are. At the end of our Unraveled series, after a summer of faithfully looking for and finding God in a variety of biblical texts, we found God in Sarah's laughter at an unexpected old age pregnancy and in Rizpah's deep grief over the death of her children. We found God in Job's tale of woe and when Israel was exiled. 
We found God within Thomas's doubt and Paul's conversion. Today, we are looking God square in the eyes as Jesus heals. Now, it may be that anyone watching us from the outside would say that we've come unraveled ourselves, a little bit unhinged as we boldly proclaim the presence of God in this moment at this time. We worship our sovereign Lord, even as we see campaigns for president that liken candidates to the only Messiah, Jesus. We pray and give thanks to Jesus for salvation, even though we see strife all around us with people out of work and people living in nursing homes painfully lonesome. We proclaim the goodness of God's creation, even though part of eastern Iowa was decimated by a rare inland hurricane and fires blaze through California and two actual hurricanes ravage the Gulf Coast. And here we are today, listening to the story of Jesus healing someone as nearly 180,000 of our fellow Americans have died of the coronavirus in just the past six months, even as people fervently pray for a cure and for their loved ones to be spared. And I stand before you today to proclaim that it's true. Jesus heals. It is not just a thing of the past. However, we can learn a lot about healing by looking to the past, specifically to this ancient story of healing in our gospel lesson today. When Jesus heals the man with a demon, it's more of a makeover than immortality. This nameless man who was off limits in his community, untouchable because he lives among the dead in their tombs, he is released of demons by our Savior. His response is to stay close to his cure, of course. He wants to go with Jesus, but Jesus tells him no. Just imagine how frightening that would be for this man. Will the healing wear off? Will he again be left behind by his community, chained up and abandoned? Yes, his life is forever changed because Jesus healed him, but he will always live with the shadow of this disease. This man with a scandalous past, he'll never be free of. There will always be whispers when he walks into a room. Jesus says, no, you can't come with me. Instead, he tells the man to live his healed life and share what the Lord has done for him. And he does it. He proclaims the power and person of Jesus that he knows firsthand, which happens to stand in stark contrast to the amazed and afraid reactions that bookend this story in Mark. The disciples are amazed and afraid when Jesus calms the storm on the sea as they travel to the region of the Gerizim. Jesus sleeps as they set sail, and a fierce wind whips up. The disciples beg him to save them, and he does with just his words. As God spoke, spoke creation into being, bringing order from chaos, so Jesus commands creation. And the disciples are amazed and afraid when they realize it. After this man is healed and the news spreads, the residents of the region beg Jesus to leave, to take his power and go back where he came from. Witnesses to the power and person of Jesus are amazed and afraid, but the one who receives healing desires a close, abiding relationship with Jesus. So I ask you, have you been healed?
It can be that when Jesus heals us, it passes unnoticed because how we're healed is not exactly what we were praying for. What's being offered to us by way of healing isn't always an immediate cure for cancer or COVID. The Christian author Frederick Buechner says that the healing Jesus brings to our lives today can be seen when we embrace the biblical mindset that the body and soul are connected. If one is sick, the other is afflicted. And from experience, we know that's true. Our worries can sometimes take on a physical attribute like hunched shoulders and a bad back, right? Anger can bring on headaches because you're clenching your jaw. Joy can be seen in laugh lines on your face. Our body is connected to our spiritual and emotional self. Therefore, sometimes the healing Jesus brings us is all in our minds. I'm serious. When I worked as a hospice chaplain, there were many times when a person who was dying was the happiest person in the room. They were living in that moment with nothing less than joy and freedom because they felt healed in their heart and soul. This didn't always comfort family members, especially if the patient was particularly young, but it happened repeatedly. Their proclamation of healing as they lay dying. In our healing, even when we are possessed by the overwhelming heartache of the world or of our lives, in our healing, let's tell everyone what Jesus has done for us. Be specific. Talk about the time we got a second chance. That's healing. The time we forgave, that's healing. The time we changed our minds about long-held beliefs, that's a miracle. In the chaos and pain of this world, healing does happen. We have treatments, vaccines, and cures from modern medicine because God created us to be cu curious with our minds. We give generously to the food pantry and the church because the Holy Spirit has opened our eyes to see abundance, not scarcity. We exercise self-control over our words because we remember Jesus telling us to love one another. This is healing. We are being healed all the time, and when we rightly credit it to Jesus— it leaves us wanting a close, abiding relationship with him. So go, tell what the Lord is still doing for us and this world. Amen. Okay, let us begin. Here we go, Emsley. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the world. Do you wish to have your daughter, Emsley, baptized? If so, please answer, I do. I do. As you bring Emsley to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, Place in her hands the holy scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, and care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Emsley grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer, I do. I do. 
Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Emsley in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, answer, I do. People of Christ gathered here today, do you promise to support Emsley and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the way of sin that draws you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sophia, would you help me, please? Would you pour the water into the font? That could be a great job for you. So you pour, and I am going to pray, okay? Oh, pardon me. Okay. Go ahead. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world. Thank you. Calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be give, given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I'll just move that down. All right. Can you bring Emsley forward? And Very good. You want to tilt her over? Well, that's going to be fun. <laughs> Emsley, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Woo! You did it! You did it! <laughs> Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Emsley with the spirit of, with your gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Emsley, child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. You're doing great. Here, I have this little guy for you. Paul's going to bring you a candle here. <laughs> That's just like swimming, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. <laughs> That's you! That's you, Emsley! 
Our next hymn is Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone by Chris Tomlin. Today, Mark Nordeen presents it to us, and it is beautiful. Feel free to sing along. Let's pray together to the one who heals and loves us. Holy God, open our eyes to see the healing you bring. Make us bold enough to proclaim your action and presence here and now. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, all you have made is good. Give firefighters in California endurance and safety. Bless their families. Comfort those on the Gulf Coast as they clean up and recover from hurricanes this week. Protect health care workers as they offer your gift of healing. Lord, in your mercy. Sovereign God, you alone are our ruler. Help all elected leaders embrace your gifts of truth, compassion, and equality. Guide our nation to free and fair elections. Help unite us to share your love. 
Lord, in your mercy. God of all people, heal Jacob Blake. Comfort his family and the families of those murdered when protesting this week. We don't understand the hatred or fear of other people made in your image. Help us break down systems of discrimination. Cure us of the disease of racism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, send your presence to those we name before you now. Judy, Marcia, Sandy, Alberto, Linda, Melissa, Kim, Bob, Phyllis, Stephanie, and Rick, Wanda, Dan, Pam, Debbie, Tom, Violet, Paul, Shelley, Ruth, Donna, Arizona, Donald, and all we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for those who've died, who've taught us of your love. Comfort all those who mourn. We lift before you especially the families of those who've died from COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea below. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.